Ladies and gentlemen, I can't really do this without an example because I was planning to use an example because when I first heard uh, the basis of this message, it was with an example that brought more clarification. So, uh, Lindsay, hey, I know you're just up here, but can I, can I get your hand? Can I get your hand? <laughs> no. Just no. Your hand. I know I wasn't here you this morning, up but jeez. Being up here. Well, if I could just get you to sit right here. Right here. I didn't get you. Is that Jesus calling? <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek. Before, before we start, I got I got to tell a joke. Oh, good message. Start with a joke. That's all. Okay. No, no. The joke has nothing to do with you. You're just my colorful example. In fact, you're a very great example because you're human. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. First off, I got first, the first joke is a dad joke. Okay, bear with me. What's brown and a little sticky? Anybody that doesn't know the answer? Chocolate. Chocolate. Anybody else? Brown cow. Brown cow. Syrup. Chocolate ice cream. A stick. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Second one. There was a man who had um said suffice injury, and I might have stolen this joke. He had went to his doctor to see um, what the problem was. Apparently they dialected that the problem was in the back of part of his body, upper part of his torso, and the doctor went through questioning him about what could be wrong. He went to find clues and led to the man saying, I don't know what it is, but my back has been killing me. I think there's seriously a part of my back. The doctor's like, well, how do you know that? I don't know, it's just a hunch. <laughs> okay, now if you're laughing, I'm telling Jeremy because he said that joke like two weeks ago. So, yeah. It was just so funny and I couldn't stop laughing on that. Punch back if you didn't get it. It's still hilarious. I'm going to laugh about it tomorrow. Okay, check. We have this scripture, and before I start the scripture, I want to point to another one. Of course, I'm going to paraphrase because I'm famous for that. Jesus is in the garden of somewhere. He's on a model. He's the transfiguration. If you just look in your Bible, transfiguration is should be one of the headers before you get into the actual chapter. Jesus, uh, Peter and John, is that who it is? Those three, those three amigos, tres amigos. Um, they was up there and near the end of this, or in the middle actually, Peter, I'm pretty sure it's who says it because Peter always steps out. He says, yo, Jesus, master, savior, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, yo, homie, what's good? Dog, should we make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for... Elijah? You think Lazarus? No, it's Elijah. Elijah. It's either Elijah or Elisa. I'm not sure. I speak the same way. Elijah. Okay, cool. And before they even get into that, well, sorry, after all this, I believe that they said here also that... Well, when they talk about John, you guys remember John the Baptist, do baptizing. Is that why they say Baptist Church? Because they want to take after John, like John's disciple? I don't know. We'll get to that. <laughs> In the scripture, it's Matthew chapter 11. It's not the transfiguration. In verse 11, it says, I assure you, among those born of men and women, oh, sorry, those born of women, <laughs> <laughs> no one greater than John the Baptist has appeared, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That scripture is not important. I just want to point out what happens next. He says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence. And the violent have been seizing it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. If you're willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who is to come. Anyone who has ears should listen. I point out that on the transfiguration, I believe Jesus said the same thing about John, uh, Elijah, come. But the main focus of the scripture is from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence and the violent have been seizing it by force. Jay Gibbons, one of my favorite rappers, if you have time, feel free to look him up if you like rap, poetry, humble beats, all that. He has a song, it's called Attack of the Clones. The chorus is, sorry, I didn't come to sing tonight. I'm just, I'm just say, they say there's a grace abounding chasing me. They say, um, electrified with the power of 10,000 power lines, and the violent take it by force. The grace of binding chasing me, of course, is referring to God's grace, because who doesn't grace chase after? Did you guys get here safely? 
Cool. Oh, I couldn't sell my car when I was leaving my uncle's house, and I was like, you know what, God? Obviously, there's something up where you want me to stay here for a, a couple extra minutes to figure out what's wrong. Of course, I made it here. That's God's grace yet again. Attention. Um, we see that, um, and I'm sorry if I skip around. I think I have a, I think I have a problem with anxiety. Like my mind cannot stay in one place, especially when I'm driving or I'm at work. I will think about different things. So bear with me. I know you guys have seen that before when I preached here. You guys remember? You guys remember? I would say, take one scripture, then the next, and then chasing rabbits, as Pastor Chavis puts it. We have um, the divine have been seizing heaven, uh, the kingdom of heaven by force. Now, we say the kingdom of heaven. We're not talking about a there, past the cosmos, you know, like home someday heaven. When we say the kingdom of heaven, I believe that we are, that Jesus is referring to us. Lindsay's my, my great example today. Say hey, Lindsay. She's not getting paid. Um, <laughs> the kingdom of heaven has been violently overtaken and, man, if we could just imagine a fortified city. Okay, the kingdom of heaven today is getting overtaken like the Israelites overtook all the other people's cities, if you guys have read the Old Testament. They did. Uh, walls of Jericho. Yeah. Jericho, they marched around, the walls fell in. The walls did not fall down, they fell in. So nobody could even rebuild in front of them. They fell in the ground, if you guys, in, not down. They fell in. There was nothing that the walls of Jericho, there was nothing that Jericho, Jericho could do, because I'm pretty sure they were so cocky, they didn't even have any other defenses, let's be honest. The wall of Jericho is such a fame, if the wall falls, which I'm pretty sure it won't, guys, we ain't got nothing else to rely on. Also, as I read, Choo, 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 choo. This wasn't part of the message, it's free. <laughs> in Numbers, there was a... See, I gotta find people's names because I feel like I'm cheating you out of a message. If I don't use the actual person's name, they'll be like, this is not in the Bible, I can't find it. Okay. Numbers chapter... Uh, Balaam. Sorry, not chapter Balaam. It's like chapter 20 through 24. Um, Balaam and the guy's name... Is Balak. Okay, so Balak is the king that the Israelites have rolled up on because God was like, hey, yo, go over here. And of course, Israelites going in the desert. But well, we ain't got no choice. We might as well follow where God says through Moses and the other preachers or priests. So they come around this dude, and Balak is scared out of his mind. He's like, have you guys seen what the Israelites have been, do have been doing? They've been going for, they, they got this God with them. They got somebody with them, some unstoppable force. This is violent force, of course. That they go somewhere and they overtake the place completely. They kill everything in sight. Me being a block here. Balaam, I seriously need your help. I need you to put a curse on these people so that I so that my people will live. I need my people to seriously like overtake them in battle because I know they got something with them that I don't have. Okay. So um do Balaam. He um talks to God and God is like, you know what, don't go with this dude because some stuff's about to go down, of course, with my children overtaking his people. Um, so, Balaam asks God again. So, Balak, uh, Balaam ends up going down to Balak's place. Balak is like, hey, yo, come with me. Look at these people. They are outnumbering us, and we're not even going to get close. We're just going to look at them from the hillside. They are just over this valley. They're just over this mountain. They're just over there to where they are less than a day's journey from the completely wiping out my people. So, really, what I need for you to do is I need you to put a curse on these people so that they cannot prosper against us. And Balak, common sensible, he's talked to God on his way there. He's talked to God before he got there. And he's talking to God there. He's like, okay, we're going to make an altar. We're going to do some sacrifices because, of course, that's what we as God. Um, I've been reading about all the sacrifices in the Old Testament, by the way, in the law. Um, and there was just certain things that you would do to, like, get God's approval, get God's blessing. Because if you didn't follow the rules, God basically was either, either going to let you have another chance to follow the rules or he just wasn't going to listen to you. Honestly. So, uh, dude goes three or four times uh, to talk to God. They make like three or four different altars. They sacrifice three or four sets of cattle and sheep just to hear God say, look, what I've done for this people, you can't undo. And um, Balaam already gets this. He's like, hey, yo, look, I've already talked to God before I left. Well, God is blessed. I cannot curse. And Balak is so scared of his mind, he's not even using common sense right now. He's like, look, how about you come with me? Come look at them again. We're going to make another altar, and I want you to talk to God 
please put a curse on these people. And Balaam was like, look, I told you, I cannot say what the Lord has not commanded me to say, and I cannot put a curse on what God has put a uh, blessing on. So through that, we see that Israel, God's people at the time, well, I'm pretty sure, still God's people, but also the Gentiles, if you guys have read the Bible, <laughs> we're the Gentiles. That's a joke. Um, <coughs> they're also God's people, and being God's people, we're supposed to be the overtakers as Israel was. You guys catch on that? Okay, cool. This is my colorful example. Uh, Jarius, can I get you up here? Also, also. I wanted to use Jarius initially, but he was late. Thanks a lot, Weasel. But look, you guys are great because you guys are people. Um, Jojo, can I get you? Okay. Yeah, you guys are humans. You guys are God's craftsmanship. You know what that means? It means that when God spoke something, he was thinking about you. And he created you to create things. You're not going to stand with him. Sorry. You're in, Tennessee, you're in Tennessee colors tonight. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> The kingdom. I'm so, representing. Okay. You can represent your losing team. Okay. The kingdom of heaven. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven, my dear kingdom. Because honestly, look at this. I'm wearing my shirt tonight. Jesus Freak Nation. Free order your shirts. I do free delivery here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Um. Anyways, the kingdom of heaven has been violently overtaken. We say violently overtaken. Jojo, you're gonna be my burglar. Okay. But look, you're not actually gonna touch them because I'm protecting these people. Okay. So protect your life. I'm in guard mode. I can't let people think that I'm weak or something. It's a warning. Hey, I don't like it. I'm not going to touch you either. See? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be the smart burglar. You're going to, because Jesus said, if a man knew that his house was going to be broken into, I assure you, he would have stayed awake and, I don't know, waited for the man. It goes something like that. I just got the point of, hey, be a light sleeper so you can take the dude that's going to take your house. <laughs> and I'm a light sleeper. I wake up about 20 times a night. Shout out to the Rogers. <laughs> I'm tired right now. Right, check. The kingdom of God has been overtaken. It's been advanced against violently. And, of course, what would go against God's will, God's nature. We have sinful nature. We have the one we call the evil one, the wicked one. Satan, he does not deserve to be looked up up here. Remember this. Pay attention real quick, real quick. When you talk about Satan, you don't say, man, Satan's just been doing this to me. He's like, man, look, under my feet. Because God has already crushed the enemy under your feet. Keep in mind, Satan is not bigger than you let him. But keep in mind, he's also a prowling lion. You got to go in with God because he's done some work on demons. Check. Okay, so the kingdom of heaven, represented as uh, Jarius and Lindsay, we're going to call these um, the human population, the uh, body of Christ, those um, all the way up and those at backside or whatever. Because check. The kingdom of heaven is being violently overrun since the days of John the Baptist. John the Baptist pointed out the Pharisees just like Jesus did. He called them a broad of vipers. Check. They weren't doing anything good. Do, are snakes going for anything good? Biblically or out, outside of cartoon life? Are snakes going for anything good? I mean, most of us see a snake, we want to run. My brother used to want snakes. He got in high school. I don't know what happened. He's terrified of snakes now. Witnesses? Okay. Check. If the kingdom of heaven is being violently overtaken... Of course, I'm going to stand my ground. There is no way that I would let somebody break into my... I would not let anybody knowingly break into my house to assault my lovely cousin. My... Cousin? Uncle I don't know. My other lovely cousin. <laughs> of course, if you're on my team, if you're on my family, there is no way that I'm going to let anybody with the permit of arrest or anything come in here and violently assault you. How many of you, your, uh, your baby, first day out the hospital, would just like let the nurse take them like, hey, look, we're going to take your baby. For a couple years, you, you might not see your baby again. We just got to make sure, you know, that the baby understands. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. We just got to make sure something about the baby. I mean, who's not going to keep tabs on their child, especially a mother who just like gave birth? Shout out to the uh, other kid in the back. Whatever his name is, the baby. Uh, Brad, not Bradis. Oh, what's Brad. the baby's name? Brad. Brad. Rick. Brad. Bradis was Travis's old name. <laughs> Dad. Okay, cool. There is no way that we can allow our assets, such as wonderful as people, because people are made in God's image. God gives us authority over each other. He gives us friendship. He gives us relationship. There is no way I will ever let my kids in the future, if that's possible, ever be openly assaulted, over, uh, kidnapped, taken. Any bad thing that you can imagine. I'm not going to let my kid get hit in the head with a crowbar. If I have any power to say so, I'm not going to let my mother take a saw, my uncle, my aunt, 
These people here in the church, I'm not gonna let any child of God, of course, I'm not gonna let any human, if I see somebody about to get hit with a crowbar that does not need to be getting hit with a crowbar, like he doesn't have a gun in his hand, I'm obviously gonna intervene, right? I don't know, it's just to hear on me. Pray for me if I get shot. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was actually the example. You guys could have seen. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is Jerry's, by the way. I'm just not plugging in together. Me and Jerry's are God brothers. Like, I've known this for a long time, but it was like clicked in my head. Like, last week, I was like, hold up. Me and Jerry's is God brothers. That's like brothers. <laughs> I always want to be everybody's big brother. I don't know why. Just showing love to him. Shout out to Isaiah. Okay, check. The kingdom of heaven, of course, we call the brothers and sisters of Christ. Um, we cannot allow them to be overtaken. Is that agreed? Okay. Uh, motion with an I. Aye. Okay, about five percent. Anybody else think that the kingdom of heaven cannot be over, uh, violently overtaken just out of our free will, out of our laziness? Anybody thinks that we should stand up and do something if something is going the wrong way? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I thought I was at the wrong black box. You know. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 <clears throat> Sat down the other day, talked to God. What about 20 pages? We're only going to read like three. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, how is the kingdom ever overtaken? Because we all got, also have to agree that the kingdom has been violently overtaken. Jesus said it, and we see it in, let's say, news. If the church is showing the burning fire of hatred instead of the consuming fire of love. As anybody, like, I've even been a person that's used hatred instead of love because my common sense was acting crazy and I couldn't tell the difference somehow. Like anybody else, like, look, God loves you. He wants to save you. Not, you need to get in church at night. You're going to hell. And you know what? God is mad at you right now and hates you because that's a misconception, right? Mm -hmm. Misconception. I'm not talking about childbirth. I'm talking about misunderstanding. Lecrae got three songs called Misconceptions. They're all fire. Go check them out. Look, he's not getting paid. Um, <laughs> The kingdom of heaven is overtaken. I'm going to say that like 50 million times. So take that with you. In fact, every time I say kingdom of heaven, deeply embed it in your mind because that's something you got to study on your own. When I say the kingdom of heaven is being violently overtaken, this is basically an intro message because I don't interact with life the way you guys do. You guys got different people you talk to and you got to hold this deep to yourself because we're going to get to that point. We're gonna, oh. How is the kingdom overtaken? We have um, like a generational corrosion because we got separation in the church of generations because we don't know how to interact generation wide to the millennials, millennials to the other generations. I don't know your name, I'm sorry. But um we have fatherless children in societies, and then we have less of fathers. We have misconceptions of God. Some think he's always angry, he's always just ready to destroy the next person that steps in the church that didn't pray before they came or that they did something the night before. That's a true misconception. Some people I talk to, look, man, I don't think God's going to forgive me. And it's real. It's heavy on them. I don't think God really wants to see me because of something that I did last week. And people don't get to see God's grace and love. You know, remember, we got to show the love of the church, not just not the burning fire of God hates you or anything like that. Because some people do. And it's crazy. I, I feel sad sometimes. I'm like, hold up, man. Who is actually representing Christ then? Because nobody's accurate, if nobody's accurately representing Christ, then that man, the European version, does not exist in our hearts. And we all have some type of level of hatred from some type of rejection or hurt that we claim to call Jesus Christ. And that's not Jesus Christ, if you guys couldn't tell. I've seen love. You know, I've, I've seen love every first Sunday when y'all eat at the church. I, I know what love is, my Christians. <laughs> some people think that God's always angry, um, so they don't want to touch him. Some people think that God only loves people that do go to church on a regular basis. Some people think that you always got to be in a suit in church. Not me. Some people think that if you don't pray before every meal, God's not going to honor that. In fact, some people would think that if you don't pray, God's going to put you on purpose. And not what I think, but these are misconceptions that go off in humanity because humans are creative. Amen? Amen. I own my own styles. My mom owns her own styles. You on your own styles, you on your own styles. Y'all look professional every time y'all come in. So, I just got to say, uh, yeah. JJ. <laughs> um, or that he only has plans for Christians. Some people think that if we don't go to Chick-fil-A, if we're not a fan of Tim Tebow, we're not actually a Christian. Some people think that if you don't support an idea just because a Christian came up with it, Jesus. you're not a Christian. 
some people think it's like the slave type mentality. Like, I heard a joke, another joke. And Jeremy, I used your joke, by the way, they all laughed. <laughs> it was only, it was a hundred, <laughs> hilarious. But, um, yeah, you copyright right on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person getting paid tonight, that's it. Nobody else. <clears throat> and I kind of forgot the joke, so. <laughs> Some people think that just because we're Christian, we have to fit the mold of anybody else who says they're a Christian. Amen. Just because I like the skateboard doesn't mean that Miss Diane has to like the skateboard. <laughs> Especially since I suck at skateboarding. <laughs> just because I like my bread butter side down doesn't mean I'm going to go to a war with somebody that's butter side up. Keep in mind, Christianity is a free... Sorry. Christianity is, first of all, it's the only pure and undefiled religion. We like to classify religion in different sections like world religions. Not all that, not, I mean, you can even look at Christianity as a religion, but I don't want to look at it as a, I pray I get good points from God, and if I don't pray, then it's like negative and he's mad at me all the time. This is the religion because it answers the questions to life. The Bible was written so long ago, but it still answers questions today. Amen? That's what we're reading there. Yeah. Okay. Losing that trend And some Christians believe and this, this, this made me cry the other day because my friend struggled with this. My personal friend, my homie, my little brother who thinks he's stronger than me in the gym. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> thinks that just because you sin, you're not Christian. He even got a tattoo on his arm that said, this is from NF. And NF hit the hammer. Hit the hammer. Hit the hammer right on the head when he said, I'm Christian, but I'm not perfect. Saying that you are Christian does promote these things. It promotes you to gain knowledge and access to God's love. Like even more so, because of course we all see we we don't even know it sometimes, but it's God's grace and love. But you came understanding in the kingdom, mm -hmm. you become a member of the kingdom, and you get to know that God isn't the angry dude sitting in a chair acting like Odin from the Thor movies. God is more like the teenager that shares his lunch at school, or the guy that's not ever shady to give a ride to somebody else. Or to even pay for somebody's meal at a restaurant. They don't have it. God is my um, humor sometimes. Because I laugh for no reason. And it's just like such a peace. God is like the water that carves the rocks slowly. Because what we got to realize is when people get in church. And when people start talking to God in a relationship. That pure and undefiled religion. The love that God has curves in. Only God can really change people. And believe it or not. God will never force anybody to do anything. So people, some people be like, you made me drop that, like talking to me. I'll be like, no, I'm a human. I can't make you do anything. And I love me and God see a lot of conversations because it gets lit like this. And God will never force you to choose anything. He has choices for you to make and choices for you to do, of course, but he'll never make you choose this or that. So God is like the creek. If you guys see waters, I mean, not waters, rocks, the water goes over, it smooths them over. You can't chisel them like that. You'll, you'll break the rock or you'll mess up. You can't heat them like that. Only the smooth running waters can bring a curve of the rocks. I know you got some, like the really smooth ones, like you just want to rub on your face, something like that. I know it's me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. <clears throat> some Christians think that all atheists are evil. When in reality, just because you don't know Jesus doesn't mean you didn't, that like, you picked against him. Some people have never met God. And some people, when they're offered the option of Jesus, sorry, big ups. When some people are offered the option of Jesus, they aren't actually given a real version, you know. Like, hey, yo, but they never talked about, you know, hey, yo, this is actually a sacrifice. Because you're supposed to live humble. You're supposed to walk humbly among your peers. Amen. Pointing them to the light and let the light shine bright. Don't let nobody dim your sparkle. Amen, amen. Yama got the t-shirt by from her. She's getting paid today. <laughs> and in all those misconceptions, there's quite a few. In fact, there's probably an infinite number because humans are so creative. We lose sight of who God truly is. And especially if you're not reading your Bible, but you're always taking secondhand information. Like me, when I paraphrase, I'm saying, get in your Bibles yourselves. Amen. Then we find ourselves knowing a little and little about God and more and more about our ideas about who, what God should be. There's somebody, there's a quote in my Bible somewhere. Um, it says, when we start to look down on others and start to play God, 
then we define morally what's right and wrong. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Famous quote, right? It's not in the Bible. In fact, the Pharisees was like, hey, yo, why are your disciples not washing their hands before they eat? They don't obey the tradition of the elders. And Jesus is like, boy. <laughs> Fair place. Let's get it. Okay, we got to remember, in this fight, of course, honestly, I thought I'd be done by now. I have some glasses on. <laughs> it's a two-part message. Uncle Joel said he was delivered from preaching long sermons. He was delivered. Jerry, you can go back to CFC now. <laughs> I died laughing at church too. Okay, now, when we're under a heavy temptation, thoughts become actions, right? In a high, scene, a high sense area, like um, somebody's running out of Walmart with goods. Either you're going to make a decision, hey, I'm going to stay out of the way, let somebody else get them, or you're going to like step in the way. Uh, we have somebody, of course, somebody break into your house. You got quick impulse decisions, right? Anybody? Because I don't, I don't just let life go by. I watch everything. Well, so in the areas of life when um, thoughts become actions, like super quick, super low key, super quick, super quick, we should. Um, that reminds us that we got to be, you know, guarded with the right stuff, you know. And Dominio said, if you don't, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, right? If you always got your socks on, you're you're already ready to put your shoes on, right? Amen. I don't ever wear socks. But for everybody else. This is why we got to keep so key that Jesus needs to be directly close to our hearts. Thank you. Because when Jesus is directly close to, you know, actually living in our hearts, mm -hmm. then all our decisions are already like kind of like blueprinted. Like he didn't make us choose him, of course, but he's like, hey, yo, God, you know, I'm saying yes right now. Whatever you want me to do, I'm saying yes. And then then you tell me where then you tell me how much money I need to give to the next guy or how much I need to be uh, how much needs to be in my car so I can go out and give, you know, or how when I should go to sleep so I can wake up early to do something tomorrow. When your decision, when your decision is already yes to Jesus, he already makes a way for you. Amen. When we're being violently overtaken, it's, it's already too late. You know, the hay is in the barn. My cat Joseph Solomon recognized that Jesus and his disciples was out preaching the gospel someday. And the disciples uh, brought somebody to him. And the man was like, look, your disciples prayed. They were not able to take this demon from my son, my baby. Anybody remember this? Yeah. Jesus, what did Jesus say? Prayer and fasting. <laughs> exactly. This type of demon can only come out by prayer and fasting. Now, this happened in the same day, probably the same moments. In fact, I bet you even the same couple minutes of when the kid got there and Jesus recognized that. So what does that tell us? That Jesus had already been praying and fasting. Y'all catch that? Because I never caught it when I read it until Joseph pointed it out. So that means you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. If you guys are taking notes, I'm great mental one now, or you can get them on YouTube later. <laughs> I'm sorry, promote it. Promote it. Promote it. So we got to stay ready so we don't have to get ready. And that means when we're under pressure, when we're under uh, trials, when I'm under stress, like I, I'm constantly under stress at work. I told them I couldn't be a manager anymore. Pray for little Caesars. <laughs> I'm serious. They don't understand because in fast food, you, sorry, sidetrack. In fast food, you expect everything to be perfect every time you order it, right? You expect it to come out the same amount of time. You expect it to look exactly the same, exactly like the commercials. And if not, you start losing points on your attitude. If you're always around, this is my nose. If you're always around somebody with attitudes, well, you, you're going to eventually walk out with attitude. If you're always around somebody that's telling perverted jokes, you're going to start telling perverted jokes and laughing at perverted jokes and, and like making stupid jokes at church. Then your pastor going to catch you. Come over to your house. Whoop you now for you. <laughs> You know, you gotta do that. Exactly. God's gonna love, you know, the water over the rocks. Okay, cool, cool. I gotta keep moving. I gotta keep moving around. So here's what God gave me while I was sitting outside before I came in the course. Okay. We gotta acknowledge the truth that I said earlier. The kingdom of heaven is being over uh, is being violently overtaken and overrun. Sorry, I'll stay right here. I won't. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got like this much hair. Is it right? So you're good now. Okay. We got to acknowledge the truth that the kingdom of heaven is being overrun. We got to acknowledge the truth that we are the kingdom. And of course, if we are the kingdom, if we're Christ's followers, if we are the body, why are his hands? That song probably sold millions. Everybody knows that song, right? Mm -hmm. Why are his hands reaching, his love, healing, 
teach you know, some of that. Why is feet moving? Yeah. If we're at a body, we got to do something about ourselves because God is not coming back for a lazy church. Amen. He's not coming back for a church that does not like to worship and pray. He's not coming back for a bride that is too fat on the world's goods. I'm sure he's going to appreciate the spiritual qualities, which is why she's the bride of Christ. God is coming back for a church that's fit, a church that's seeking him, a church that is out there preaching the gospel and freestyle rapping on YouTube, Phoenix Lazarus. God is coming back for a church that is truly after his own heart. We got to acknowledge that. So since we acknowledge both that the kingdom of heaven is under attack and that we have to be prepared, we got to acknowledge the state of defense. If, a, if the man knew that his house was going to be broken into, he would have stayed away. He would have stayed and kept watch so that his house would not have been broken into. Called his friends over like, hey, I know this dude's coming tonight. Bring a couple of baseball bats. We're going, we're going to be good. We got to acknowledge a way of attack for ourselves. Because, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm, I'm not going to just let nobody come at me and me not do nothing about it. Not a truly villainous person. Like, of course, I got grace and forgiveness for the natural. But I'm not going to let somebody just come at me with a crowbar. I'm going to pick up a box or something and hit them in the back of the head, okay, until we get everything sorted out. So in our way of attack against the people that are over attacking the kingdom of heaven, not these earthly people, but things that work on the outside, the other side of them, you know, because we see humans first, right? I see, I see the person who cusses me out before I see how Satan pissed them off in their day. Sorry, that's a cuss word. Okay. I, I grew up thinking it wasn't, so I forgot I was in church. <laughs> we got to recognize that our battle is not against humans or humankind. It's against higher levels of principalities, you know, things that are also under our feet, so lower levels. And we got Jesus. So Jesus is our way of attack and our way of defense. Amen? And how can we um, have Jesus as a way of attack and defense if we don't know Jesus daily in our lives? You know, reading scripture. You know, if, if I do... 500 push-ups a day. I'm going to get really toned, right? I'm going to get, like, really, like, one-punch kills, right? If I run 10 miles a day, I'm probably going to end up <laughs> be on Jimmy's level endurance. If I go to McDonald's and order everything off the Big Mac, off the uh, McDonald's menu, Big Macs and all, if I ate that for a whole month, I'd probably die like the other guy did. But you know what? That Jesus gives us these life examples. What you put in is what you get out. Before the season's up, the hay has to be put properly in the barn. So acknowledge, we're going to recap again. Acknowledge that the kingdom of heaven is under attack. That's us, and we got to do something about it. So we got to acknowledge a way of defense. Amen. Secondly, we got to acknowledge a way of attack. And then we got to acknowledge a way of motivation, growth, outreach. Living on Mission is the series that Pastor Jason at Washington Avenue preached, at, uh, preached about for the past few months of summer. And it was epic, man. We got to overflow, outreach, pray, unite. And that's what we got to do as the body of Christ because we got to look out for our brothers and sisters. Doesn't Paul say, he who has turned his brother away from sin has uh, gained a brother? Again, thank you. Tennessee and Sisson. So what's that leave for us to do? We got we to gotta be the people that end the misconceptions of the world. We got to be the people that show the love and not the hate that God doesn't really have on humans because of our misconceptions. We got to be the people that points that point out Jesus the way he actually is and not the way that we see him through our stereotypical or prejudice or injustice having eyes. Because surreal, humans make misconceptions all the time. Here's a, here's a good one. I didn't know that my car needed more than gas and oil when I got it. It took me over some things and some guys to tell me, hey, your car should be making that sound. The power steering. And I felt betrayed a little bit because I've been driving a car for like a couple months and I'd leave Miss Science house every morning and she never said anything. I was like, hey, why didn't you tell me my car was making that sound it should have been making? I thought it was natural. It was a power steering fluid. Every time I turned my wheel, it was like, rrr, rrr. it was singing to me. You were like, I can fly with my baby. You know. <laughs> she was like, I didn't hear it. So when we look out for our brothers and sisters, I'm not blaming it on you. It's not your fault. You're probably doing something very useful. Uh, I approve. When we look out for our brothers, we can stop them in things that they don't understand. Like our children. When we look out for our children, these babies, because these are our upbringing. These are our, um, this is our, is that Jesus call? <laughs> these are our um, growth that we put into the planet because these are our growth for the harvest. You know, pray pray for laborers to gather the harvest, right? Y'all remember that scripture? 
If I actually put numbers to the scriptures, I probably have the whole Bible memorized. But I don't. I just know the words. <laughs> we got to uh, look out for them. Like, seriously, there's some stuff that we miss because, well, sorry, not. Well, yeah, me too. Me too. But I, from what I've understood, what's the generation above me called? I'm millennial. What's the next people? Like, Jeremy and God. What's, what's, what's baby boomers? Baby boomers? Yeah. No, no, no. That's too far. That's too far. Too far. That's Coach Roman. Generation X. That, yeah, that's, that's Coach Roman. Huh? Generation X. Generation X. Thank you for my name. You're right, you're right. Because the I am. From what I heard, this is what I heard at the pastor conference. I took away a lot, and I got notes. I didn't bring them. That the Generation X was kind of pampered. You guys were like, uh, given a lot because your parents knew how to work their butts off. I'm not sure which of you are Generation X, but I'm not going to make uh, assumptions. That's, that's not politically correct. But from what I can tell, uh, Z to X, right? The Z, baby boomers? Help me out, Mom. I, I wasn't alive that long, is it? So is Coach Rowan. He's an awesome guy. I'm pretty sure you are too. So we got genera- baby, baby boomers that knew how to work their butts off. So in turn, the people below them, Generation X, they didn't uh, learn how to make a lot for themselves. They weren't very active. And then that bled into our generation. We have, like, me, myself, personally, I have little experience. I, I'm, I'll figure it out with this car that I truly am ignorant. Like, there is so much that I don't know. Uncle Green's like, man, you got to know this stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll take an automotive class in college. I was already thinking about becoming a mechanic because everybody has car trouble, right? When the people above Generation X didn't take a lot from their parents, that left us in a desolate place. And then we had the next people. What's that leave the next generation? Because I... One out of every 200 person, people my age is probably like truly on the Jesus Free Nation. I just see sure. And this, this is a serious thing. What does that lead to the next people? If we aren't raising up God-fearing generation uh, millennials, how are we going to have that for the generational, uh, generation Y? It leaves us a lot to think about because we should really be in tune with each other. We should be the church that is violently taking back area that's ours. Because if the world turns its back on God, we've already seen what happened with Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, prideful. You've already seen what happened with Nebuchadnezzar's son. Nebuchadnezzar turned back from his pride after he was a beast. Nebuchadnezzar's son killed that same day that he didn't. We see what pride leaves, uh, what pride left saying. And we've also seen what pride left us. I, I never thought I was gonna get in a wreck. L- let me be honest with you. I'm like, I'm always a slow job I stop at every stop sign. It happened so fast. Well, slow actually. My car was slowly going forward. Praise the Lord that not that much damage happened. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you guys to leave with this. The kingdom of heaven is violently overtaken. We are the kingdom of heaven. And God's going to ask, what did you do to help society out? God's going to ask, what did you do to ensure that your kids were watching what they were supposed to be watching? You're like, well, God, I don't know about this. Well, you got to link up because we have generation. We have the whole church as a whole, right? God didn't say, hey, just ask the older people. God said, if you... Uh, I'm paraphrasing. Paul said, if an older man or woman in the church uh, either offends you or sins or something, lead them back as if they were your own mother or father, right? There's some things that older people don't know. And what people get caught up on is, you know, it's not just one age group that has to be the change. My generation is called the Bridgers. So we're supposed to help you guys with the younger people. I'm out here doing that. So what did we learn? Is that an actual quiz? Like one person can answer and then we'll be done. Oh, the kingdom of God is being violently overtaken. We cannot let nobody take our kingdom from us, right? This is our inheritance. This is our inheritance from the Jesus Christ. It took us how many years to get Jesus here? You know, how many prophets? How many people died? How much blood has been spilled already? We cannot just let the kingdom of heaven slip away. It's got to be more important than sleep. It's got to be more important than breathing, more important than eating, that you talk with God on a regular basis. Listen for him. He'll show his way. Anybody else? Comments, questions? I like having open services. Questions? I leave Bible studies. That's why it's like that. Heckles? Hecklers? I take the hate. If you're always ready, you don't have to get ready. If you're all, yeah. Stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's Andy Minio. I'm not trying to get sued. I already got Jeremy back there. I love the illustration about the water and the rocks. Yes. Yeah.
that just came to me. God said anything that he tells me in service, I got to charge everybody $20. It's not like if I get the message at home. So, Wait, how you guys play go out this door? No, you play before you go out. <laughs> There's an angel out there guarding with a sword that goes everywhere today. I'm flying out the back. I think I need a drink of water. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, what else? You guys want to sing a song or I can just pray us out right now? You guys at peace? Go ahead. Father God, thank you for this marvelous Sunday night preaching. God, I've been waiting to do this, and you've got me so far in life. Thank you, God, that I'm able to share with everybody with everything that I learned that we can share with each other. Thank you, God, that we can be the generation, the generations that come to God in this year, this season, for such a time as this. May we be the laborers that you've called to your field. May we be the laborers that are persistent, that are ongoing, that aren't the lazy ones that say, hey, he started late. Why did he get paid just as much as I did? Man, we be the faithful laborers and know that we got to be focused on you. It's not about other people, but it's about your kingdom being brought forth, God, because we know that you have every good thing in mind for us. May we be faithful, may we be persevering, may we be the runners, you know. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. May we recognize that we can get back up again as much as man does. Lead us into your kingdom, Father, and lead us as leaders of this planet. May we all recognize that we need you humbly, and may we all recognize that we've all messed up. So let us all love each other. We even more love than before. Reverend always joke, it will be done. Amen. Who's first?